Welcome back everybody to Zlatan's Fight Picks. Today we're going to go over the fight predictions for UFC Fight Night Rosenstruck versus Almeida. It's this Saturday, tomorrow, May 13th. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we're running a little late. I had a chance to watch the weigh-ins and uh, the ceremonial and the face-off. So that gave me a little bit of insight on a couple of things. Nevertheless, uh, let's get started. We will start with the prelims. Uh, Jessica Rose Clark, 5'5", five 64-inch five, reach. 11 wins, 8 losses, 35 years old. Tanara Lisboa, 5'6". Um, they don't even have the reach. 5 wins, 2 losses, 32 years old. You know, originally I was actually li uh, leaning towards Tanara Lisboa. Um, I don't really like Jessica Rose Clark's fighting style. I don't think she's that good. I don't she's a I don't think she's a great striker. Um, she has definitely taken it upon herself to be more of a grappler. And besides getting somebody down and laying on them, she's not a real good submission grappler. She's she's a good wrestler, but not really a good grappler. Um, and I was leaning towards Tenera because I was looking for any reason not to bet on Jessica Rose Clark. But the more I dug into the the the, the record of Tanera Lisboa, it even though she has fought uh, in Muay Thai against um, Shevchenko and she fought her first uh, MMA fight against uh, Norma Dumont, I mean she got choked up by Norma Dumont even though she was taking it to her with the strikes. She looked really good on the feet. Um, she disappears for a while and then she comes back and then all of a sudden she fights a whole bunch of people that are absolutely nobodies and terrible records. And it almost seems like the last fight with uh, Braxton Smith where they have a year and a half where they lay out, well, I think it was longer for her, but where they lay out a whole bunch of deadbeats that these guys can beat just to get them ready for the UFC to, to get into the UFC. I don't I just don't see she hasn't beaten any she's fought a lot of people that are good in uh Muay Thai and stuff like that. She's was a champion in the Muay Thai League. She was uh she fought Norma Dumont which she which she lost, but she did really strike very well against Norma Norma Dumont, but she was taken to the ground and submitted in the first round. It was just hard for me to take her. So I'm going to go with uh, Jessica Rose Clark. Slight edge towards her is absolutely the lowest level pick. Lowest confidence. But I think she's going to get it done just because we don't know Tenera Lisboa. We don't know what she brings for MMA. It's Her record's very suspect. I don't trust it. It looks suspicious. So I'm going to go with Jessica Rose Clark. Next fight. Uh, Brian Battle versus Gabe Green. Brian Battle, six foot one, seventy-seven inch reach, nine wins, two losses, twenty years old. Gabe Green, five foot ten, seventy-three inch reach, eleven wins, four losses, thirty years old. You know, I like Brian Battle. I, I I'm gonna pick him for the win this fight. I think he's got the length, he's got the reach, he's tough. He he had one bad fight against a really solid wrestler the last time. Everyone kind of discounts him now. Um, I think he's very durable. He's got a lot of talent. He's continually learning. He's very young. Well, youngish. Uh, Gabe Green, solid guy, very tough, can take a lot of punishment, um, very durable, very much a journeyman type of um, fighter. I like him as well, but you know, I think it's the reach and the height that's going to give Gabe Green enough problems where Brian Battle is going to win a decision. So the pick is Brian Battle. Next fight, Ji Yong Kim versus Mandy Bohm. Ji Yong Kim, 5'7", 72-inch reach, 9 wins, 6 losses, 33 years old. Mandy Bohm, 5'7", 71-inch reach, 7 wins, 2 losses, 33 years old. Um, I got a chance to see the weigh-ins. I think Mandy Bohm's about an inch taller. You know, And you see stuff like that when you when you manage to see the weigh-ins and ceremonial and the face-offs. Uh, but Ji Yong Kim is moving down a weight class, so... You know, uh, I, I'm. She was very weak in her uh, the 135 weight class. She didn't seem like she had a lot of power. She has a lot of volume. She's a great striker. A lot of good combinations. She could take a punch. She's very tough. She's very durable. She had everything going, but she was very weak. And she, it seems like she, you know she would just throw 10 punch combinations and and not hurt anybody. 
And I think a lot of the fights that she was losing is because she was winning the fights on strikes, but it just there didn't seem like there was a lot of visible damage. And she would always seem to get the worst end of it. I think she's moving down a weight class. I think it's a good move for her. Mandy Baum, I mean, she doesn't look good in any one of her fights. She does look tough. She does look durable. I mean, who knows? Maybe she can turn it around. But definitely going to be leaning toward Ji Young Kim here. She's got the better striking. She's got the faster hands, everything. They're both 33 years old. That's not a discrepancy. About the same height, uh, even though um, Baum looks like she was a little bit taller, like about an inch. It's not very much. So, uh, yeah, going to go with Jian Young Kim on this one. Uh, next fight, Nathan Levy versus Pete Rodriguez. Nathan Levy, 5'9", 71-inch reach, 8 wins, 1 loss, 31 years old. Pete Rodriguez, 5'9", 71-inch reach, 5 wins, 1 loss, 26 years old. A lot of people betting on Pete Rodriguez. A lot of people jumping on the train. He's he's a knockout artist. First round, I think I don't think he's gone past the first round. So he's got a lot of knockouts, a lot of power. This is the first time he's actually fighting at 155 because he was at 170, right? So he was at was it 170 or 185? He was at 185. Then he went to 170. Then he went to 155. Uh, so yeah, so now he's gone down in weight. I mean, we've never seen him at this weight. If he carries his power through, he's still going to be powerful. He's a great boxer. We've never seen anything else. We've never seen him on the ground. We've never seen him, you know, have to get back up or any any of that. We've never seen him pass the first round. We don't know if he's got good cardio. We don't know anything. So he could very well come out and didn't starch Nathan Levy. But you know, Nathan Levy, he does take some punches. But every time I see him fight, I mean, he he just seems like a well-rounded fighter seems very strong um i don't know i, I, I kind of like the way he, he fights um i don't think people give him as much credit or maybe maybe it's it's his defense that that really is not as good and maybe it's also his mental iq sometimes he's striking when he should be just wrestling um nevertheless gonna go with nathan levy slight edge for nathan levy don't know enough about pete rodriguez know something about pete levy I think he's going to come out. I think he's going to do well. He's changed his camp. Um, so I think he's uh, learning a few new things. I don't know. I'm going to go with him. I think uh, he's a safer bet. Uh, Carlos Alberg versus Ihor Pretoria. Culver's Alberg, 6'4", 77-inch reach. 8 wins, 1 loss, 32 years old. Ihor Pretoria, 6'3", 75-inch reach. 20 wins, 3 losses, 26 years old. Ihor, young guy, big, strong, probably going to be developing as we speak you know months go by he's going to be getting better but carlos alberg very sharp very great striking great kickboxer getting better at mma um yeah you know i, I i'm highly confident in this guy so i'm thinking that carlos alberg is going to be the pick for this fight um fairly high confidence uh, next fight, Cody Stamen versus Douglas Silva de Andrade. Cody Stamen, 5'6", 64 and a half inch reach, 21 wins, 5 losses, 33 years old. Douglas Silva de Andrade, 5'7", 68 inch reach, 28 wins, 5 losses, 37 years old. Um, this is a tough one. This is the, the fight that uh, I would go 50-50 on. I, I mean... I want to lean for a decision on Cody Stamen just because he's got the wrestling. I don't think he's got the ability to keep Silva down, but I think he's got enough. Hopefully he's wrestling and not striking um, to take him down enough times to outpoint him. Having said that, I don't know if Stamen, he, I mean, first of all, I don't know if he's going to be doing that. Second of all, I don't know if he's going to be able to get in the pocket to throw enough strikes to get, uh, take a shot at uh, Silva de Andrade and take him to the ground. I think that uh, Silva is a much more dangerous striker. I think they both came in overweight. They were at 139, so they're both coming. I think that's going to favor. Actually, it's going to help both of them because they're both really large guys who cut a lot of weight. I'm thinking that uh, Silva de Andrade could pull this off in a mostly striking battle. I don't think he's going to strike Stamen as much, but I think he's going to have the more significant strikes. So. It's going to be total styles. It's going to come down to what the judges are going to, to judge. I've got this fight as a 50-50. You'll see it on the chart. I've got a like 
to me, if I'm going to be betting a parlay, I would bet one parlay with Stamen, one parlay with Silva D'Andrade, and, and leave it at that. So, anyways, uh, it all depends how they're going to fight and how the judges are going to look at it. This is going to be one of those fights that, you know, you're going to look at it two different ways and get two different conclusions. That's my prediction for it. So, that's why it's a 50-50. Next fight. Carl Williams versus Chase Sherman. Carl Williams, six foot three, seventy-nine inch reach, eight wins, one loss, thirty-three years old. Chase Sherman, six foot four, seventy-eight inch reach, sixteen wins, eleven losses, thirty-three years old. Uh, both guys are smaller heavyweights. Uh, Chase Sherman is obviously the bigger guy. Carl Williams fought in the light heavyweight. Now he's fighting in heavyweight. He was coming in about two hundred and thirty some pounds, uh, two hundred thirty-five, two hundred thirty-nine. And I think Cordy Stame, uh, sorry, Sherman was coming in at one fifty-four. Or something like that roughly about the same size uh you know chase sherman you see a lot of him he's good at uh boxing he's a good striker uh decent stamina i mean carl williams a new guy you don't want to put a high you know value on carl williams but he is uh, a huge uh favorite for a reason because he's got wrestling that he uses consistently and he uses it well chase sherman is susceptible to exactly that kind of attack as long as carl williams doesn't get knocked out he can take chase sherman down over and over again i don't think carl williams got a huge uh or a really good um holding defense where he hold can he probably won't be able to hold chase sherman down for the entire round but he will continually try to take him down and he's got the stamina to do it so you know Fairly high probability, Carl Williams to win this fight. Next fight, Matt Brown, six feet tall, 75 inch reach, 25 wins, 19 losses, 42 years old. Court McGee, five foot 11, 75 inch reach, 22 wins, 11 losses, 38 years old. I mean, uh, which legend do you want to pick, right? Matt Brown, I mean, for 42, normally at this age i mean he's should be way over the hill but he still looks pretty good like i mean for 42 he looks good um court mcgee he looks 38 so he's a pro age appropriate for what he is he's at the tail end of his career he's gonna start to slip matt brown he's starting to slip but he's still managing to push through it and look pretty good in his last fight against barbarena uh he's not fighting a lot but uh he you know i mean he's not matt brown of old but he is still matt brown still fighting pretty good and he's fighting somebody appropriate in age and ability as far as like uh the deter the deterioration of their abilities i think they're about the same level even though matt brown's four years older he's holding it up i, I don't think court mcgee is going to be here at 42 let's put it that way but um went back and forth on this one a lot and the uh you know court mcgee had a really bad knockout it's the first time I've seen him get knocked out. Um, I don't know if he's gotten knocked out ever before. Um, very tough guy, lots a good chin. Uh, just to see him get laid out like that, I mean, it could be one of those things with his chin starts to slip. He fights a grinding style. He likes taking people to the ground. Matt Brown's got a good takedown defense. And the grinding style of Court McGee of having you up against the fence is what Matt Brown wants to do as well. So uh matt brown i think a little more dangerous with his strikes and elbows in the clinch position i'm gonna go with matt brown because of that he's gonna win a hard-fought decision next fight oh we're going on to the main card all right let's do this uh tim means versus alex morono uh tim means six foot two 75 inch reach 32 wins 14 losses 39 years old alex morono 5'11", 72 inch reach, 22 wins, 8 losses, 32 years old. You know what? The age is the one that's jumping out at me. Alex Morono, 70 years younger, definitely not at the tail end of his career. Tim Means at the tail end of his career. Uh, you know, I mean, still looks pretty good, but I mean, he doesn't look, he's not Tim Means of old. A uh, couple of fights ago, or was it last fight? You know, uh, actually one of the fights I was watching, he was uh just in the last year or two you know he he got tagged quite a few times and got dropped quite a few times and recovered but uh you know didn't look really good it's not a good sign alex morono i always thought he was a little chinny personally i think that he takes certain shots well but then all of a sudden he gets hit with 
some shots and he just won't take it well. And uh, it really affects him. So he, I think he's a little chinny. Um, but having, you know, now that Tim Means is at this age, I don't think he's as dangerous. So he should survive this. So my initial pick is to pick Alex Morono. But having after watching the weigh-ins, I saw Alex Morono. He looks really drained coming in for his weigh-in and at the and at the face-off. I mean, you really notice the height difference. I've got it up there as a high degree of probability that Morono should win. But I would. I've also got it bracketed off as uh, be careful. Maybe leave this out of your parlays or not bet on it. Just because, just at the weigh-ins, Morono didn't look great. He looked very drained. So that could take something out of him. I'm still thinking he's going to win. He should win, but that could affect it. Uh, so Morono is going to be the pick. Very cautious on this one. Next fight. Oh, Mackenzie Dern and Angela Hill was canceled. Fight after that. Daniel Rodriguez versus Ian Gary. Daniel Rodriguez, six foot one, 74 inch reach, 13, 17 wins, three losses, 36 years old. Ian Gary, six foot three, 74 and a half inch reach, 11 wins, zero losses, 25 years old. I mean, the obvious difference is the age. 11 years, Rod Rodriguez is 11 years a senior. Uh, I don't think Rodriguez is too old. I think he's at the end of his prime. I think Ian Gary's 25. He's still learning. He's getting better every time we see him. I'm not a big fan of Ian Gary. I'm waiting to see him get knocked out. Um, but, you know, I bet against Daniel Rodriguez last time when he fought uh, Jing Liang. And I thought Jing Liang slightly edged him out, but they gave it to Daniel Rodriguez. Um, here's the thing. I mean, I really went back and forth on this one. Ian Gary is the up-and-coming fighter. He's got great kicks. He's very accurate, but he hasn't really fought anyone. He still hasn't fought anyone really significant. So he's really stepping up here. Um, everyone's saying that Daniel Rodriguez, he's never fought anybody that tall. He's always has a height advantage. Yes, except for one fighter, I think Dwight. Um, Dwight something. I think he was about Ian Gary's height. And he, that was when he was at middleweight. Um, and he won. Uh, Daniel Rodriguez won. Um, but then again, Ian Gary... I don't think he's fought anyone as tall as uh, Daniel Rodriguez and has the same reach as, the, as he does in the UFC so far either. So they both haven't fought anybody at welterweight in the UFC with these heights. So where they both have had an advantage, I think they both have a disadvantage. Ian Gary, great kicker. And that's one thing I think his path to victory will be definitely the kicks. Daniel Rodriguez, great boxer. His path to victory... It's going to be not getting kicked as much and come back with combinations. Now it's going to be the speed. Uh, who's got the better speed? Ian Gary looks like he's fast, but he hasn't really fought anybody really fast yet with a great jab like Daniel Rodriguez. So having gone back and forth, and maybe this is a little bit of a biased pick, but I'm going to go with Daniel Rodriguez. He is the underdog. I'd rather take him than, than Ian Gary. I mean, we're going to see if Ian Gary's a real deal right now. So, Daniel Rodriguez, for the upset, it's going to be a close fight. Who knows, maybe he'll even catch Ian Gary. He was caught last time by a power puncher who actually let him kind of recover by grappling right after that. Um, I don't know if Daniel Rodriguez can catch him. If he can, we'll see how re Ian Gary reacts to getting caught and maybe somebody like a striker who won't let him off the hook or won't grapple with him, but rather keep him standing and hit him again and again. So going to go with the upset, Daniel Rodriguez, you know, very iffy. So don't necessarily listen to me, but that's what I have. I just have this feeling it might happen. Um, or I just don't like Ian Gary that much. <laughs> so <laughs> nevertheless, Next fight, Anthony Smith versus Johnny Walker. Anthony Smith, six foot four, 76 inch reach, 36 wins, 17 losses, 34 years old. Uh, Johnny Walker, six foot six, 82 inch reach, 20 wins, seven losses, 31 years old. Again, gone back and forth. Anthony Smith is looking really old. Um, he's 34 years old, but he has fought a lot. I mean, look at his record 36 and 17 and two. I mean, that's a huge record. So his body is taking its toll. Um, Johnny Walker, he's a little bigger, a little longer. Um, 
uh, you know what? It's going to be close. I think Johnny Walker's a little chinny where Anthony Smith is not. But that doesn't mean that his chin hasn't deteriorated in the years because of all the wars he's gone through. Uh, Johnny Walker's the kind of guy that's going to have to win it in the first round. I think it goes past the first round. You get Anthony Smith putting it on harder and harder and harder. He's going to have the better gas tank. He's going to have some wrestling. Johnny Walker might have a submission that he can pull off. Probably not. He's definitely going to have the power advantage and explosiveness, but he does start to get tired. I'm going to go with Anthony Smith. This is a pick em fight. I have a feeling that he'll be able to pull it off. I've seen him do it before, even though I like Johnny Walker in this spot. I just have this feeling that he's going to get worn out. I don't think he's going to be able to knock down and uh, knock out Anthony Smith. I'm going to go with Anthony Smith for the decision. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Um, last fight. Uh, main card, main fight. Uh, Gerardino Rosenstruck, 6'2", versus, uh, sorry, Jolton Almeida Rosenstruck, 6'2", 78-inch re reach, 13 wins, 4 losses, 35 years old. Almeida, 6'3", 79-inch reach, 18 wins. Two losses, 31 years old. I mean, they're both in their prime. Jilton Almeida is a lot taller than and Rosenstruck. I saw him at the weigh-ins. It would look like at least two, two inches or two to three inch height discrepancy. Probably two, two and a half inch. I mean, it, it just was visible. Um, Jilton Almeida looks solid. He's, he's a light heavyweight. He's only in the 230s. Rosenstruck maxed out 250s. There's only one shot Rosenstruck has. At the beginning, especially to catch him coming in, whether it's the beginning of the first round, probably the beginning of the first round, because once if Almeida gets him down, I don't think if there's going to be a second round because he's really good on top, very powerful, has handled big guys like this before. Um, once he gets on top, uh, Rosenstruck probably won't be able to get back up. This guy's got great top control. I don't know if he's going to submit him first round or second round. Maybe he'll be able to hold off uh, until the second round. I think it's probably over in the first round. The other option is Almeida gets clipped. You know, Rosenstruck has got fast hands. He he just has to hit. This is a heavyweight fight. He just has to hit him one time coming in. Just like um, Lewis did against uh, Blades. When he came in for a shot and he hit him with an uppercut and it was over. I mean, Blades should have won that fight, probably would have won that fight if he didn't get caught with that punch. And this is the same scenario. I'm going to pick Almeida. I got a high degree of confidence he's going to win, but it's a heavyweight fight against the top five guy with great hands. And uh, you never know, he could land one. But Almeida's the pick. So I'll show you the board real quick. We'll go over that. We're doing this in record time. Let's see how that looking. How's that look? It's good. Oh, I really, it's, it's, it's not too low. Too low. Just don't want it. Okay, should be good. I think it's good. Should have checked that out earlier. Still not good. Still too low. Still too low. Come on. There we go. That should be good. Now it's really good. Now it's absolutely good. All right. And you can see it too. Perfect. What do we got here? Well, as far as confidence, we're going to go at Almeida's highest degree of confidence. Ulberg, second highest degree. William, fourth highest. I had Morono as the, you know, at the, as the fourth highest. I got a bracket around it just because I don't like the way he necessarily looked at the weigh-ins. He's still going to be my pick. He still should win, but yeah, I just I just didn't like how drained he looked. I mean, he better have a good gas tank because the dirty bird is still dangerous and he does have a gas tank for days and all the time. You know, if he slows down, dirty bird having the longer reach and the height advantage could start doing some damage, especially when Morona's coming in for those shots. So, I mean, you can have him in there, you can have him out, it's your choice. I've got him in most of my parlays and a pick, but I also got one parlay where I don't have him in there just because of the weigh-in situation. Uh, Brian Battles, first underdog. 
uh, think you could pull this off, you know. Uh, Young Jung, Young Kim. Actually, I don't normally have the girls this high, but I really like. I really think she's gonna win this fight. So hopefully, that's not a mistake. Normally, I have the girls at the bottom end of it, but I do got Young Kim here because I probably more confident in her than I am with these ones. Uh, next fight, Levy. Uh, Levy fighting uh, Pete Rodriguez. Rodriguez, we don't know very much about. Going to pick with Levy. Think he's going to be able to pull this one off. Goes past the first round, definitely. Smith. Um, I think he's gonna he's gonna beat Walker. I think it's gonna be a hard fight, and uh, yeah, I don't think he's quite done yet. Very smart fighter. Uh, Brown, I think he's gonna beat Court McGee. I think Court McGee might be four years younger, but uh, definitely not in body uh, or ability for their age kind of thing. Um, I think. Court McGee has fought a lot of guys. I don't think he's fought a lot of really high-end guys. I think Brown has fought the much tougher competition. Uh, I think he's going to be able to pull this off. I don't know how much how many, how many, much he's got left. But if he's got enough, as much as he had last time when he fought Barbarena, he's going to win this fight. Last. Oh, sorry. Second last. Rodriguez. Um, maybe do this one. Maybe don't. I'm just a little biased waiting to see someone expose... Uh, Gary, if there's anything to expose, but I don't know. I just haven't seen him fight. He hasn't fought a super high level of competition. He struggled with some guys, but the guys he struggled with were tougher and better than he was, but they definitely lacked in reach or speed. Um, Rodriguez checks off a lot of boxes. Reach, um, probably very close to speed to... Uh, to Gary, just the, the height and the length, I don't know, and uh, the experience and the good jab, he checks off a lot of boxes, it's going to be a close fight, could be an upset, I'm picking Rodriguez for an upset, finally, Rose Clark, of course, Rose Clark, not because she's a favorite, I, I, would, I would fade her all the time, but this looks like a setup, <laughs> where that fighters, the fighter she's fought, the four fights, or five fights she fought five four fights i think five fights before this in mma were just absolute dogs and yeah i just it doesn't seem right i'm gonna go with Rose clark something seems off Rose talks to pick she is the underdog she started as a favorite now she's the underdog i don't know maybe some people are seeing something i'm not seeing i started the opposite way i liked um lisboa first and then afterwards i switched my pick to rose clark and everyone else went the opposite way of course 50 50 i got Stamen al andrade this is going to be a really tough fight to pick if if you're if you're betting i would not bet on this fight if i was putting in a parlay i would put one parlay with him in it and then i would put another parlay with him in it that's how i'm going to do it again not financial advice bet only what you can lose also Pick what you think you can use from this information. Maybe it's some things that you want to create by using some of my ideas here, um, you know, and uh, create your own parlays. This is how I would structure it using every single fight, of course, and fighter. But you don't have to use every single fight or fighter. This is, I, I put everything on here, even though I would probably bet the whole thing. But you don't have to because it's such a long parlay if you were doing the parlay. If you do an individual bets, Pick the ones you feel most confident in. I mean, there's some fights that are very hard to bet, like this one. The first one, first, first three are hard because the the wins, the what you get back is probably just not worth betting. Honestly, it's it's just too expensive. Because if one of them doesn't doesn't uh, perform, I mean, you're gonna have a big loss. And if the other two win out of these three, I mean, you're not gonna be anywhere close to recovering your money because the odds are so bad. So these are hard to bet on. I mean, they might be better in a parlay, but they're hard to bet on individually in general. But take it for what it's worth. I mean, see what, what you if you find value in it. And we'll leave it at that. Don't forget, bet online, 50% deposit match up to $1,000. I've got the link in the description. Uh, bet online, most amount of props out of any betting site. Uh, if you like the content, buy me a coffee is in the link in the description. Feel free to buy me a coffee. Yeah, we'll turn this around.
All right. Well, that's it. So let's hope this is better than last week. Last week wasn't a great week. It wasn't wasn't looking forward to the recap. Let's put it that way. We did yesterday. This this is the latest I've done uh, this prediction video. It's just the, the night before. I got a chance to watch some of the weigh-ins, which was an advantage. But nevertheless, those are the picks. Good luck, everybody. If you, found, if you liked the video, press like. Helps me in the algorithm. If you want to subscribe and get notifications, remember it's no cost to you. Hit the subscribe button. Get uh, some notifications when the videos do come out. Otherwise, thank you very much. Good luck, everybody. We'll see you on the recap next week.